Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Golf Course Scenario playthrough. In the last episode, we once again were trying to do some vehicle work, so we needed to get ourselves a hacksaw. Unfortunately, we were unable to craft one. Turns out we need a swage and die set, which, spoiler alert, we don't have the book for. So we went on out into the town in search of a hacksaw. We went to the garage that we explored previously looking for one. We popped a bunch of crates. We went to a local hardware store. That was a real bust. It was one of the really crappy variants that doesn't have anything in it. And then we came back to base pretty much disappointed and <laughs> wildly unhappy with our inability to craft. So instead we focused our, our attention on making a steel spear. This is an improvement over the copper spear that we had previously. And that's where we are now. Now we did just finish <laughs> forging for like a full, you know, 24 to 30 hours. So we are very weary, unfortunately, which means that we can't really go out and explore. So I think we'll spend the rest of today just reading some books. And then once the sun comes up, we will venture out and explore the town again. So let's have a look here. Have that beautiful steel spear. I see our motorcycle armor could do with the repair. I don't think we have the ability to repair that. We did pick up a Kevlar vest in a previous episode. So we do have backup torso armor as necessary. The problem mainly is we don't have anything to protect our arms uh, if we were to go down just to the Kevlar vest. So I don't know what to do about that. I don't think we have the any any recipes for arm guards. Uh, we do have a forge now, of course, and all the forging tools, but we don't have something that would, a book that would enable us to make armor. How would we even look for this? Let's just look in the armor menu. It should be broken down by body part. So we can make the metal arm guards. Now, obviously these are incredibly encumbering compared to something like the motorcycle armor, which is much less. There are only 15 encumbrance for metal arm guards. What is the motorcycle armor? Uh, encumbrance is 28 on our arms. Oh, that's just silly. That, <laughs> that metal arm guards would be less restrictive than motorcycle armor. That's absurd. Uh, Okay, scrap arm guards. Even the scrap arm guards are less encumbering than motorcycle armor. That's so ridiculous um, because they're just strapped to you. They can't be comfortable. They must be very encumbering. All right, well, we're gonna make some metal arm guards uh, provided they don't require the swage and die set, which they don't. Yep, really can't think of a downside to this. Uh, so we're gonna do that. That's great, let's do that. Let's move over to where our work table is and we'll make ourselves some arm guards. We're already exhausted anyway. We might as well burn some more time here, you know, just crafting. It only takes two hours, so even with our weariness, it shouldn't be slowed down that much. We'll get ourselves some arm guards, that's great. Uh, let's wear the arm guards and let's lose the motorcycle armor. So the Kevlar vest, oops, did not mean to take off the Kevlar vest. Uh, the Kevlar vest is excellent protection for very low encumbrance but again it only covers our torso additionally it's slightly less coverage which is not really a problem and um that's great that frees up a lot of our torso encumbrance let's unload our where where are you Un unload our motorcycle armor and you'll see our torso encumbrance is now only 23 it was in the 40s before so we've significantly reduced our torso encumbrance which means we're going to miss less shots when we're fighting fighting out and about and let's slap on those arm guards oh did we already do that uh we did okay so that's pretty fantastic we may even look into making some leg guards scrap leg guards no we would want like proper metal ones probably in a book recipe or a slightly higher fabrication skill not sure um huh okay uh we don't want to make scrap leg guards they're just a little bit more encumbering and really we don't I'm not that concerned about leg protection. It really is our torso and our arms that seem to always take the damage. I don't know. Should we make these? We probably should. 18 encumbrance. Well, we would still want to wear pants with that as well. Eight encumbrance to 26 on our legs, provided we're not wearing under underclothing that covers our legs. Leg encumbrance is not like a super big deal. It does slow you down, but Oh, I'm sorry, that's feet. Uh, it does slow you down, but the main penalty is swimming, which is really nothing that we're ever going to do. 
dodge skill minus 0.4 so it looks like it significantly impacts dodge i don't rely on dodge very much i mostly focus on armor i know a lot of people love dodge it's just not really something i, I care that much about okay let's eat and drink and we'll read some i did just pull myself away from a conversation on discord we were discussing dating websites uh, in one of the discords that i'm on i really like this discord it's a uh, the main so i feel like i don't fit with these people everyone there let's have a beer because why not everyone there is so like clean cut and perfect <laughs> like many of them have really good jobs or work in like like some of them are are literally actors from hollywood they run podcasts things like that there's a lot of really professional types there so i feel like i don't really fit with them very much and I often feel pretty out of place and kind of uncomfortable talking to them because I feel like I'm very rough around the edges and I can tell that they can tell that I'm rough around the edges. I just don't feel like I belong there very much, but we were discussing dating websites and specifically why I'm not on them, uh, you know, because I'm single and I'm old, you know, older where it's a little bit harder to meet people organically in the real world. Many of them were talking about, oh, I met my wife on Tinder, or uh, yeah, my boyfriend, we met on Tinder, or things like that. And it's just sort of weird to me to hear that Tinder is like a place where people meet. Why, why is that trying to use my purification tablets? Oh, I selected the wrong thing. Okay, so we should be able to make a full gallon here, yeah. It's just weird to me, you know, Tinder has a reputation for being a little bit, you know, focused more on the physical and less on meaningful relationships. And I'm definitely a, a relationship type guy. So I don't know. And I'm just not on dating websites. I had someone comment on YouTube as well, because I think there was an episode probably like several months ago where I discussed... Um, what were we talking about? Oh, I was giving dating advice because our random question was about dating advice. And uh, I said, like, you know, I'm, th I'm 30, whatever. I, I don't have great advice. I'm single, whatever. And someone in the comments was like, oh, you should get on a dating website. And I just don't, I don't know. I don't fit on dating websites. I feel like they judge you. You know, like I feel, I remember signing up for eHarmony which is like a really, you know, well-known, established in the uh, in the area, in the industry. Uh, I remember signing up for that years ago, and I went through this whole process. They make you fill out this really long thing, lots of questions. And I did all that, and I got to the end, and it was like, hey, we can't match you with anyone right now. So, you know, come back sometime in the future and reapply. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I've been rejected by an online dating website. I'm so unlovable that <laughs> they their algorithm knows that no one could possibly love me. Uh, and that was really deflating. But I've been on dating websites. I just don't feel like I fit there. I always feel like I'm being judged, you know? Plus like anyone on a dating, so like I'm my primary interest is in women, almost exclusively. In fact, I have a very small interest in men, uh, but I don't know that I really would be in a long-term relationship with a man unless they were like the perfect person or something. So I'm very much interested in females and on the internet, females are pretty much constantly barraged with like uh, attention and people who want to sleep with them and you know are, are a little bit unpleasant maybe so i even if i was on a dating website and i found like a attractive woman that i thought i meshed with the odds are good that she's been barraged repeatedly with other men trying to hit them up and contact them so like i always feel deflated like what how am i going to compete you know this this woman you know you find someone that is attractive that has an interesting profile that you think you might click with and you think like, oh, they've probably been approached a million times. What do I have to offer that someone else didn't already offer, you know, personality wise? I'm not that impressive of a guy. I'm not that, you know, whatever. And I just defeat myself before I get invested, you know? I don't think dating websites are for me. I would much rather meet someone organically. I keep hoping like I'll meet someone nice on Discord. And I do meet nice people on Discord. 
Um, but a lot of times I don't have a lot in common with them. Like, cause I've had people flirt with me on discord and it's like, yeah, you know, you're nice, but I don't think we really actually have anything in common. Um, or else I'll meet someone and I find out like, like, you know, we'll talk a little bit and I'll be like, okay, this person seems nice, whatever. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm 20. And I'll be like, ah, I'm, you know, I'm 33. I'm definitely not going to you know, flirt with and try to date a 20 year old. That's not me. That's kind of gross. So even when I do meet someone that I like, they're always like 20 years old. Anyway, let's not talk about this. We can um, pull up a random question here. We are going to murder this zapper zombie. Oh, you know what? Let's fall back and then we'll shoot it. Uh, we're going to fall back because we've shot here before. So we know that the area is mostly clear. We're going to shoot it because the metal spear will conduct electricity. And the uh, zap damage from the zapper zombie can actually really accumulate a lot in your torso. If you continually hit them or get zapped, um, it can deal a lot of damage very rapidly to your torso, which can be very dangerous. So it's going to shoot this fella. Uh, oops, we need to wear our M4. And we'll pulp you. You don't have any CBMs. We will take your flashlight. The nice big disposable battery in it. Nothing else. Let's get a random question. Once again, always updating the list of random questions here. And we'll just click. I really, they're all single space now. I, I, I did something where they all got to be single spaced and I hate single space. Okay, let's scroll, click. Who makes you laugh the most? Ooh, okay, uh, we'll get another question after this because I don't think that this one is very expansive and worth talking about. I don't really laugh very much. If you make me laugh out loud, you're a real funny person. Like I don't laugh very much so generally i'll give you a chuckle like <laughs> yeah okay you know like not not a real serious laugh because i just don't laugh very much the people who do make me laugh the most um every now and then so i watch northern lion we've talked about him before probably my favorite streamer i'll watch him sometimes uh he doesn't do collabs as much as he used to but he used to collaborate a lot with a lot of people and uh, their banter oftentimes would get a chuckle out of me because they're just a, a group of funny people who, you know, have been <laughs> being professionally funny for the last 10 years or so. So uh, they can get a laugh out of me. Um, him in his individual stuff, like when he's just uh, recording by himself, a little less so. Uh, I'll occasionally chuckle at stuff he says, but not a whole lot uh, because he is a funny dude, but he's a very dry kind of funny like I am. So... You know it's a little less make you laugh and it's more like a snort here and there like okay guy like you know that kind of laugh uh other than that i do listen to the horror virgin podcast i talk about them sometimes as well um there are three hosts in that show they also have excellent banter um they have a lot of chemistry the three of them so a lot of times they will get a chuckle out of me um i remember one of the hosts his name is mikey they were uh, talking about a villain in a horror movie and everyone was talking about how much they hate them like oh my god this villain was terrible i hated him so much i wanted him to die and then mikey was like uh yeah that guy's an 8.5 on the rectum scale and i don't know why it just got such a i was sitting in my car you know listening to this podcast and i laughed out loud and that's pretty rare so you know, occasionally people will get a chuckle out of me or, or a serious laugh. Sometimes I'll see a meme or something that'll make me giggle. Uh, I do giggle. I know I'm a, a man of 33 years, but I, I am prone to giggling when I find something really funny. Probably never on camera. I don't think I've ever giggled <laughs> in the stream. We're getting horde music. There's really not that many of them here. Uh, and with the steel spear, most of them are dying in one to two hits. So I don't think we're really at any risk here. We will kite them, of course, just out of safety and and to protect ourselves and you bled to death excellent i didn't even think about that we probably should be uh manipulating them to bleed to death more frequently because it will save us stamina in melee combat but we're doing just fine okay let's get a different question because like i just don't laugh that much honestly i can't remember the last time someone in real life made me laugh my niece sometimes i guess says pretty funny stuff because she's a kid She's, uh, she'll be seven this year, I think. Anyway, let's get a question. What would your ideal life look like? Um, not, not super different from the life I live now. Uh, I wouldn't be working, uh, if I, in my ideal life, I would, uh, spend all of my time being creative, I think. Like, I, like, I, every night, so I, I work seven days a week on my current job. I only work, you know, three to five hours a night, but 
I do work seven days a week and have worked seven days a week for the last uh, probably five years. And it's not hard work, you know, it's just sort of time consuming, but uh, I hate it, you know, it's just, it takes time out of my day that I would like to spend on other stuff. My ideal life, I'd be making YouTube videos and writing novels full time, basically. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to get better at YouTube. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but hopefully over the last couple of episodes, during the intro, it's been a slightly edited sequence where I splice in footage from the last episode where we kind of recap. I thought that would be a nice thing to do. I don't know if I'm going to follow through on that, but I'm trying to get better at YouTube in general so I can produce better content. I think things like my cabin time-lapse series build was a step in the right direction. I think that's something that people enjoy without realizing like, I don't think most people realized that that would be something they'd enjoy, but then once they saw it, it seemed like a lot of people liked it. So I'd like to do more of that. Ooh, hello. Oh, we just had four, five Zambies burst out of the walls. Interesting. I think that's due to this screamer. Oh, in fact, there's quite a horde. Where, why are you here? Oh, they probably came out of the boarded up building. Man, these boarded up buildings are seem like they're way more common than they used to be. What are you? Just a house? No. Abandoned storefront. Okay. I mean, that would be common, I guess, in the apocalypse. I think for game balance reasons, their frequency is a little problematic, but it's okay. Anyway, I think this screecher is what is drawing their attention. Um, you just sort of look like a zombie that's crouching. Screecher, zombie, thin corpse. Yeah, so they shriek, uh, and I believe their shrieking is about the same volume as a gunshot. So it's possible that they heard that. If we look, did we get any messages about them shrieking? I feel like we did. Doesn't look like it. I don't know. Do they shriek even if they're not in range? There's probably a range on it. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to fall back and we're going to deal with these guys. We're not going to let them overwhelm us here. Thankfully, again, basic zombies, we're still early enough in the game that we don't need to worry too much. If, uh, you know, this were more advanced and a couple of these were brutes, that could be problematic. We do have the rifle, of course, but I'd much rather kite them in melee. Look at that little stream of enemies coming at you. So I would be creative full time. I would really, I really wish I had a little bit more time uh, during the day. I would like to write more, which is something I haven't been doing because I've been focused on just trying to put together my personal life has been a little out of control. So what's the question exactly? What would your ideal life look like? So I would probably live on my own so I wouldn't have to deal with the family issues that I deal with currently. They would still be problematic. Of course, I still care about my other family members. So things like stuff with my brother being out of hand. Um, I could, oh, I'm bleeding. I could, from the head, okay. Uh, you know, I would still be concerned and still looking in on my family and trying to make sure that they're okay. But also, it would be less of an issue if I lived on my own. So I do, in an ideal world, I would have less family problems. I mean, if we're talking about an ideal life, I mean, I'd be married, I guess. Uh, I would have a, a, a relationship that was meaningful and, and, you know, expansive. Something that, you know, would last a long time. I would... Uh, my ideal life, I'd be rich, I guess. Who wouldn't say that, you know, if they were asked about their ideal life? But I'm, I don't really care about money. I know everyone loves money, and money is like a huge motivator that makes the world go round. But I just don't value money that much. I don't need that much. You know, I've been living in poverty, basically, for the last, I mean, for years now. Uh, and you do get used to it. I do occasionally have situations where I'm like, man, I wish I had money. Man, I wish I didn't have this financial burden. But there are also a lot of times where I'm like, I'm okay, you know? I, I make virtually no money, but I can still afford food. You know, currently I live with family, so my overhead is very low. The business that I want to start is based around content creation, which basically has zero overhead. I don't have to hire employees. I don't have to buy product. I don't have to uh, do much financially to exist. I just need a, a real internet connection, a computer and some basic equipment. Uh, you know, I hear people talk like that all the time where they're like, oh, I want to stream, but I can't afford a 
$1,200 computer and I'm like, you don't need, when I started YouTube, I had like a hundred dollar laptop from six years ago, you know, and I, I bought a $30 microphone and don't get me wrong, going back, that content was terrible. Uh, and the audio quality was not good, but that wasn't the mic. That was me not understanding audio, you know, that, and that's just stuff you learn over time. So like my audio today, don't get me wrong. I'm still, I have some shortcomings when it comes to audio. I, I could be better about EQ. I don't fully understand it, but the audio of this video is so, so much better than the audio from two years ago, or even six months ago. If you look back at my last, uh, cataclysm series that was done on twitch the audio in this series is so so much better than that and that was only you know five or six months ago so people get in their head that they need all this equipment but the reality is plenty of people start doing youtube with just uh like an iphone you know whatever their cell phone is they use that as their camera you can get mics on amazon for under 30 bucks that are not amazing but are good enough you know audio quality is much better uh, much more important than video quality and uh, basically anyone can start a YouTube channel these days one of the beauties of YouTube is that it takes something that historically was very limited so like if you think back um, so I don't know how old you are internet but for me I'm 33 I was born in the late 80s and I grew up in the 90s and 2000s and uh, if I wanted to be on television I had to be an actor or uh, I had to be someone who went to journalism school or I had to be someone who had a particular skill that was exceptional that people wanted to interview me about things like that um, you had to be a TV personality you had to maybe maybe you would get interviewed for like the local news but that was about the only way for a normal person to get on television if you wanted to be on radio, you had to, it was much more than just, oh, you have a nice voice. No, you had to be an audio engineer. You, ha I mean, I'm sure there were some people who got famous on radio just for having a nice voice. But most of those guys and gals, they were people who were actual sound engineers who spent, you know, their college years learning how to use that equipment and, and growing as an individual and growing their skills. So the bar for entry was so high to get on radio now that's the beauty of YouTube. That's the beauty of the internet. It enables basically anyone who can invest under a hundred bucks. They can have the same, you know, reach that radio could have had. You know, I'm not saying you will, you will start very small, but it allows anyone to make content. Whereas previously it was limited to a very small number of people who, you know, had to have, like they had to be exceptional. They had to fight for that few radio DJ spots or, or whatever. Um, and the internet has opened it up to where it's a very low investment to get access to what is very powerful technology and very powerful distribution. So for me, when I think about YouTube, that's one of the first things I think about is, uh, you know, people say, Oh, I can't do it. I, I can't invest the money or, or I don't, you know what, I don't know what to do. There are people right now on YouTube, that you would never watch their content because you don't have an interest in it, but they make thousands of dollars and reach tens of thousands of people on a regular basis talking about anything, you know, some, I guarantee. So I haven't looked, but I guarantee if you go on YouTube right now and you Google like, uh, like civil war era buttons, I guarantee someone is making content about like art, like completely authentic civil war era uniforms. And I'm willing to bet that they're reaching a lot of people who have that same niche interest. So like YouTube is just like a powerful, how did we even get on this? What does my ideal life look like? Basically, <laughs> I'd be a rich guy with a, a nice wife, probably some kids. Uh, I, I wouldn't have to worry about money and I could spend my days creating whatever I wanted. If I had more time, I would invest more time in getting better at YouTube. If I had more money, I would invest in probably taking some courses about things that I think would be important, maybe hire an animator or thumbnail artist, something like that occasionally. It's one of the things I look forward to the most in starting the business. It's not that I'm gonna make money because frankly I won't, I'll make like, I don't know, probably 12 to 50 bucks a month, uh, you know, depending on the month. So it won't be a lot of money, but once I start the business, I can start buying things for the business. I uh, So I'm, like I said in the last episode or the one prior, I'm starting working on a RimWorld series right now, and part of what I would like is to have a really catchy thumbnail because 
Normally I don't put a lot of work into thumbnails and it's kind of a different series for me where I'm actually putting some effort into editing and making it smooth and adding music and stuff like that. And I would love to just go to Fiverr, pay somebody five to 30 bucks and say, hey man, I need a RimWorld thumbnail. So I want this, I want it to look like the pawns from RimWorld and I want this, throw this in there and just basically give someone, basically outsource something for very cheap uh, and do some work that I'm really bad at, which is artistic work. So that's what I look forward to with the business. It's not like I'm not looking forward to making a ton of money because that's not what it's going to be. But I'm looking forward to having the freedom to spend that little bit of money on something that actually benefits the channel and hopefully makes the content better. So yeah, ideal world, I would just be a creative, you know. I would I would have uh, I would have time to settle in and just work on some novels, you know, is something that I, I keep putting off. Like there are so many days when I'm like, okay, I have a little bit of time. What do I do? And then I just sit down and edit all day, uh, or I, you know, will will I waste 20 minutes playing some little game that entertains me for a minute, and I find that I I end up with this little bit of time where. I do a bunch of work and then I feel so stressed out from working so hard for like uh, two uninterrupted hours that I sit down and play a game and then I feel guilty about playing the game and I would just like a little more freedom and a little bit extra time. If I had just like an extra hour or two every day, I could uh, I could focus a little bit on my novel, uh, which I've been really neglecting. I You know, back when we started this series, I think I was talking about the novel a lot. I was working on it. Every week I was churning out, you know, I don't know, every time I would sit down, it was like three to 12,000 words a week, you know, depending on how many days I worked on it. So I was making a ton of progress and then uh, I just got depressed, had some family stuff going on and I lost all motivation. We should go south uh, because if we kite this guy and we head to the right we know there are enemies over there we don't want we don't want their attention so we head back the direction we know is safe i don't know internet it's the same thing anyone will tell you the one thing that everyone wants is a little bit more time uh time and money you know are the two things people will say reliably so i don't know i don't know what my ideal life looks like i just want to stop struggling you know like financially i want to stop struggling I want to stop struggling with my mental health, you know, in the ideal life, I would have conquered my mental health issues. And I don't know, I, I imagine I have pretty modest expectations. You know, I don't expect a lot out of life. I just want just a little bit more than I have now. You know, uh, I don't need to be famous. I don't need to be a bajillionaire. I don't need to be a New York Times bestselling author. I just want to do okay you know like that that comes up all the time too because i talk about youtube stuff and then i get people who comment uh on here and on discord they'll say things like well you really think you're gonna be famous doing youtube like i've seen your content do you really think that you have what it takes to be markiplier and they don't say markiplier most people say like pewdiepie or whatever but and i always tell them no you know my goal is not to be that person my goal is to be like I don't, I don't need millions of subscribers. I don't need uh, to be on Twitch where people throw money at me every day. I don't want, I don't even want that. I don't want to take money from my audience directly, really. I just want to be like moderately stable. There are plenty of people on YouTube and Twitch who make money enough to be full time or enough to supplement their income. They they don't need to have a million. You don't need a million subs on Twitch to make a little extra money or a million subs on uh, YouTube to make a decent amount of money or or to, to get a sponsor deal or a brand deal or whatever you want to call it. You don't need to be Markiplier. You can get those with 30,000 subs, right? You don't need 24 million or whatever the top people have, you know. Anyway, this is a ramble. I think we'll call the episode here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Sorry I keep reverting to YouTube talk. It's just something I think about a lot. And I know more and more I feel like I alienate my audience by talking about that because I don't think most of you care that much about YouTube. But uh, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you had a good time. I'll be back with more Cataclysm in the near future. And I'll see you in the next episode.